This is Mac OS Ken. Staffing up for the next iPhone. Stories supportive of Apple shares. And the sky may finally open for Apple. It is Tuesday, the 30th of May, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Visit betterhelp.com slash macOSken today to get 10% off your first month. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSken. There is something decidedly normal feeling about this first story. A piece from the South China Morning Post says Foxconn has started the annual higher-up ahead of the next round of iPhone production. According to the report, Apple supplier Foxconn Technology Group has raised the pay and bonus packages for new recruits working at the world's largest iPhone factory in Zhengzhou several months before the U.S. tech giant launches the next generation of its flagship device. Starting today, the piece says new recruits who stay for at least 90 days will get bonuses as high as $424 U.S. That's on top of hourly pay of roughly $3, which is really sickening when you consider how much an iPhone costs. Additionally, the piece says current Foxconn workers referring noobs can receive a bonus of roughly $71 U.S., Interestingly, the piece says the $424 bonus marks the third recruitment tier this month. It was just a week ago that that was raised from the first tier, roughly $283, to the second tier, roughly $353. iPhone City, as the Zhengzhou factory is sometimes called, can accommodate about 200,000 workers, South China Morning Post says the higher pay and bonus packages for workers in Zhengzhou underscore electronics contract manufacturer Foxconn's commitment to continue assembling iPhones in the city despite the ongoing shift of Apple's manufacturing supply chain away from China. Three times in one month, though. Given last year's unrest around COVID restrictions, One wonders whether the novelty has worn off of factory work for some in the Middle Kingdom. Sort of like how some here in the States are disinclined to go back to the office. Time enough to wonder about that in the months and years ahead, as Apple continues to diversify iPhone manufacturing for one reason or another away from China. For now, though, there's something decidedly normal feeling about Foxconn gearing up for another season of iPhone. Canada's largest public pension got out of electric vehicles and in to Apple in the first quarter. A piece from Barron's says Canada Pension Plan scooped up shares of Apple while slashing positions in Chinese EV makers Neo, Xping, and Li Auto, as well as U.S.-based Tesla. Despite my turn of phrase, CPP is not out of the EVs entirely, but Barron's characterization of slashing positions sounds spot on. The org's Tesla holdings now stand at about 454,000 shares, a drastic reduction from CPP's previous 959,000 shares. Reductions for the other EV makers fell along a similar line. As for shares of the Cupertino company, those went from about half a million shares to a little over 760,000 at the end of the quarter. That puts the current value of CPP's Apple Holdings at roughly $133.3 million, unless they've added or subtracted since. What do the moves mean for CPP's thinking? Read into that as you will. Barron says the organization declined to comment on the investment changes. A general story of Apple's strength from the Times out of the UK. According to the paper's headline, Apple nears top of tree again as world's only $3 trillion company. Yeah, okay, I guess. Except it's currently valued at $2.76 trillion. 
Well, that is enough to make it the world's most valuable company and certainly puts it closer to $3 trillion than any other company out there. You're still talking about a difference of about $240 billion. But it's back on its way to 3T, according to the Times. D.A. Davidson analyst Tom Fort reels out a few reasons for the paper. For tech in general, Fort says, You're seeing large-cap tech shares rebound on the increasing expectation that the last interest rate hike by the Fed was the last one. The very rapid rise in rates put material pressure on shares last year. For Apple specifically, the analyst says the Cupertino company benefited tremendously from China's reopening after years of stringent COVID restrictions. That's helping both production and consumer demand in China. The time site strength this year for other tech shares, like Netflix and Meta. That's got third bridge analyst Scott Kessler saying... Apple and other big tech companies have seen recoveries, in part reflecting this notion that, with more and more uncertainty in the global economy and global markets, these are companies that, because of their size and their balance sheet strength, can perhaps weather the storm better than most others. Thinking along a similar line is Alliance Bernstein analyst Dev Chakrabarty. In some ways, he doesn't seem overly impressed with Apple, the Times has him saying, We don't think the growth in either earnings or operating profits is as strong as it has historically been, and while the innovation platform adds product extensions each year, it's been some time since a major new product itself was added. That said, he says, What investors value, however, is the stability and consistency of their revenue streams and the increasingly annuity-like nature coming from ancillary areas such as services, cloud, and care. More news in a moment, but first a word from today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Online therapy. How much time and effort do you spend on you? Doing for others is great. It's commendable. But if you do and do and do for others and don't tend to your own needs... Pretty soon you've got nothing for others, nor yourself. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life, so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. For that, there's BetterHelp. Totally online, BetterHelp meets you where you are. Designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist any time for no additional charge. I had that happen with BetterHelp once. Switching to a therapist that was right for me couldn't have been simpler. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MacOSCan today to get 10% off your first month. That's better help H E L P dot com slash macOS can better help dot com slash macOS can Apple's on its way to on its way to court. Fox Business says the Cupertino company has been ordered to a settlement conference with an outfit called Fintiv. Fintiv is suing Apple over alleged patent infringement tied to Apple Wallet and Apple Pay. Originally filed in 2018, the report says the suit alleges that Apple infringed directly and indirectly on Fintiv's patent for technologies related to mobile wallet applications in its Apple Pay and Apple Wallet apps. Seems that this one is not a patent troll. Founded in 2010 under a different name, the piece says Fintiv is a financial technology firm that features a mobile cloud commerce platform that offers cloud payment services, loyalty programs, and marketing campaigns. They'll meet to try to hammer out a settlement or make a good show of trying next week, Thursday, the 8th of June. The conference would be the last step in the legal process before the case goes to trial, according to the report, although the parties could still reach a settlement 
if a trial begins. And finally today, a cryptic tease from the makers of the video game No Man's Sky. Apple Insider has word of fun and games on Twitter between the Twitter accounts of Hello Games founder Sean Murray and Hello Games' own account. First, we set the Wayback Machine for about a year ago. Apple Insider says the massively multiplayer game that is so massive you're unlikely to find other players in it was teased at last year's WWDC. According to the piece, the game was used at last year's developer conference alongside Resident Evil Village to promote Apple's new Metal 3 API. So we know that No Man's Sky is coming to Apple's platform or platforms at some point. The Resident Evil title made it last October, but No Man's Sky is still out there. That brings us to this week's exchange between Hello Games and its founder on Twitter. Sean Murray, said founder and creator of No Man's Sky, tweeted a tweet with a red apple emoji. Hello Games quote tweeted that tweet, adding a green apple emoji of its own. Of course, as Apple Insider's sensible read on the exchange, this should be interpreted simply that No Man's Sky is finally launching on Mac. That launch could take place during WWDC and be one of Apple's available now moments during the keynote. But No Man's Sky is this great big immersive thing, and Apple's expecting to launch a mixed reality headset next week. And 2 plus 2 may equal nothing in this case, but Apple Insider really can't seem to help itself. If Apple does reveal its long-awaited Apple VR headset during the keynote, the site says, No Man's Sky could be announced as a launch title. According to the piece, this isn't too far of a stretch, given that the game already runs in VR on other platforms like PSVR and Windows, if Apple is pushing VR gaming as hard as rumors suggest, it will need titles to share at launch. That would certainly be a show of strength for Apple's offering. At the very least, though, it sounds like No Man's Sky may actually really finally be on the way to something made by Apple. If you missed Monday's show, as I suspect a few of you did... We looked at a positive trajectory for Apple's anticipated headset, the possibility of new Macs at WWDC, comings and goings in Apple's mid-level executive ranks, and more. It may have sneaked past, but don't let it get away. Check out Monday's Mac OS Ken, because believe it or not, this is not Monday. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me, and sponsored by BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MacOSKen today to get 10% off your first month. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at Patreon.com slash MacOSKen. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.